Volcanoes. The adventure steeples. Drowned the pox till your adventure steeples. Drowned the pox. Spout till the adventure steeples. Hi, good afternoon. If you are zooming from Manila, magandang hapon. And if you're in the U.S., I think it's early morning for you. Hi, I'm Anna Valdez Lim. Welcome to Theater Space. Um, let me tell you a little bit about Theater Space. It, it started during the pandemic because we were in lockdown and isolation and actors had no way of rehearsing and communicating and having a sense of theater. And um, I'm an acting teacher and a director and I continue to work with actors for their auditions online. Um, so I had this um, idea of inviting um, an audience to watch our online work. And um, we had such a good feeling from it that we started to um, rehearse longer and invite um, more people to watch. And um, so we started to have this feeling that we were back and theater can be on cyberspace. Um, the difference uh, between live streaming and theater on cyberspace is that we do not pre-record. So we don't get a chance to fix our performance. Um, once we start the show, once um, the clock starts, if we lag or if we have a power outage or if we mess up our entrances, then um, we have to manage the way we would in live theater. And that gives us the adrenaline. It also gives us the experience of practice. So your presence here today is very important because you were the part that ignites our adrenaline. So thank you for being here with us. Um, I'd like to introduce um, some of the people who work behind the scenes. First of all, theater space is uh, voluntary. So we come together to rehearse and um, there are no fees. Our fees exchanged um, is our time and participation. So our stage managers today, let me introduce them. We have Edith Garcia. Hi, Edith, and Agatha Enesio. Hi. Hey, you want to say something? Say hello. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, I'm Agatha, and I will be taking your questions for today. If you have any questions for the director or the actors, please feel free to post your questions in the Q&A box at any time during the show. And I'm Edith, uh, Edith Garcia. I'm the stage manager for this show, and I'll be assisting Agatha later with the Q&A. We are so proud to be presenting to you this wonderful story written during a time of plague, now once again in spite of the pandemic, a true testament to the human desire and prerogative to connect with one another. Speaking of connection, we encourage everyone to use the chat box kindly and generously as it is the only way for the actors to connect with the audience. Today we show the heavens more just and welcome you to this great stage of fools. Enjoy the show. Um, they are actors too, so you might be wondering why they speak so well. So tell us what you're going to do for the night show. Oh, um, tonight at 7 p.m. I'll be playing Goneril. And tonight at 7 p.m. I'll be playing Cordelia. And on 7 p.m. your stage managers will be Goneril and Cordelia for that show. <laughs> Good, great. So uh, if you're actors and you want to uh, join Theater Space, submit. I, I think you can find our websites uh, in the chat and around, uh, submit your um, resume and video. Enjoy the show. Thank you, Edith. Thank you, Agatha. Thank you.
I thought the king had more affected the Duke of Albany than Cornwall. It did always seem so to us, but now the division of the kingdom, it appears, of which of the dukes he values most. Is, is not this your son, my lord? Uh, his breeding, sir, has been at my charge. I have so often blushed to acknowledge it now that I am raised to it. I cannot conceive you. Sir, this young fellow's mother could, whereupon she grew round wounded, and indeed, sir, a son for her bed. Do you smell a fault? I cannot wish the fault and then the issue of it being so proper. But I have, sir, a son, by order of law, some gay elder than this, uh, who is yet <laughs> no dearer in my account. Yeah. Though this knave came something so saucily to the world before he was sent for, yet his mother fair, there was good sport, and his making and the wholesome must be acknowledged. Do you know this noble gentleman, Edmund? No, my lord. My lord of Kent, my noble friend. Your lordship. I must love you and sue to know you better. My lord. Yep, nine years. Undeserving. And away you shall again. The king is coming. Attend the lords of France and Burgundy Gloucester. Give me the map there. <laughs> know that we have divided in three our kingdom, and tis a fast intent to shake all cares and business from our age, and faring them on younger strikes, while we unburdened crawl toward death. A son of Cornwall, and you are no less loving son of Albany, we have at this hour a constant will to publish and taught us several damas. The future strife may be prevented now. The true great princess, France and Burgundy, great rivals in a youngest daughter's love. Long in our court have been amorous surgeon, and here are to be answered. Tell me, my daughters, since now we will divest us by the rule, interests of territory, cares of state, which of you, shall we say, doth love us most? That we are largest bound to extend where nature doth the very challenge. Goneril, I will is born. Speak first. Sir, I love you more than word can wield the matter, dearer than eyesight, space, and liberty, beyond what can be valued, rich or rare, no less than life with grace, health, beauty, honour, as much as child e'er loved or father found, a love that makes breath poor and speech unable, beyond all manner of so much. I love you. What shall Rodelia speak? Love and be silent. Of all these bounds, even from this line to this, with shadowy forests with champions rich, with plenteous rivers and wide scattered meads, we make thee lady. To thine ennobleness is you be this perpetual. What says her second daughter, a Jewish Regan, wife of Cornwall? Speak. I am made of that self metal as my sister, and prize me at her worth. In my true heart, I find she names my very deed of love. <laughs> <laughs> Only she comes to <laughs> that I profess myself an enemy to all other joys which the most precious square of sense possesses, and find I am alone felicitate. In your dear highness, love. <laughs> then poor Cordelia, and yet not so, since I am sure my love is more ponderous than my time. Is thee and thine hereditary ever remain this apple third of our fair kingdom, no less in space, validity, and pleasure than that conferred in Gonville? Now, I joy, although alas and least. Whose young love, the vines of France and the milk of Burgundy, strive to be interest. What can you say to draw a third more opulent in your sisters? Speak. Nothing, my lord. Nothing? Nothing. Nothing will come of nothing. Speak again. Unhappy that I am, I cannot heave my heart into my mouth. 
I love your majesty according to my bond, no more, nor less. How hard, Cordelia, mend your speech a little, lest you make more your fortunes. Good, my lord, you have begot me, read me, loved me. I return those duties back as I right fit, obey you, love you, and most honor you. Why have my sister's husbands, if they say they love you? Happily, when I shall wed, the Lord of hand shall take my flight, shall carry half my love with him, half my care and duty. I shall not marry like my sisters to love my father all. What goes thy heart with this? I, my good lord. So young and so untender. So young, my lord, and true. Let it be so. Thy truth, then, be thy dower. For by the sacred radiance of the sun, the mysteries of Hecate in the night, by all the operation of whom into existence cease to be, here I disclaim all my paternal care, propinquity and property of blood. And as a stranger to my heart, and behold thee from this forever. The barbarous Scythia, nor he that makes his generation message to gorgeous appetite, shall to my bosom be as well neighbored, pitied, and relieved as thou, my sometime daughter. Good my liege. You... Please, can't. Come not between the dragon and his wrath. I loved her most and thought to set my rest in a kind nursery. Hence and avoid my sight. So be my grave, my peace, as here I give her father's heart from her. Call for arms! Hussars! Call for Gandhi! Cornwall and Albany, with my two daughters' dowers, digest that. That pride which she calls plainness, marry her! I do invest you jointly with my power, preeminence, and all the large effects that troop in majesty. I self my monthly cause with reservation of an hundred knights by you to be sustained, shall our bold make with you my due turn. Only we shall retain the name in all the large effects addition to a king. The sway, revenue, and execution of the rest, beloved sons, be yours, which to confirm this coronet part between you. Royal Lear, whom I have ever honoured as my king, loved as my father, as my master, followed, as my great patron thought on in my prayers, you... Oh, is spent and drawn, make from the shaft. Let it fall, rather, though the fork convey the region of my heart. Be can't turn mannerly when Lear is mad. What wouldst thou do, old man? Fix thou that duty shall have dread to speak, when power to flattery bows, to plainness honours bound, when majesty falls to folly. Reserve thy state, and in thy best consideration check this hideous rashness. Answer my life, my judgment. Thy youngest daughter does not love thee least, nor are those empty-hearted whose low sounds reverb no hollowness. Enter thy life no more. My life I never held, but as a pawn to wage against thine enemies, nor fear to lose it, thy safety being motive. Out of my sight! See better, Lear, and let me still remain the true blank of thine eye. Now by Apollo! Now by Apollo, king, thou swearest thy gods in vain. How facile, miscreant! Kill thy physician, and thy fee bestow upon the foul disease. Revoke thy gift, or whilst I can vent clamour from my throat, I'll tell thee thou dost evil. Hear me, Ricky, and on thine allegiance hear me! That thou hast sought to make us break our vows, we do us never yet, and with strained pride to come betwixt a sentence and a power, which no our nature nor our place can bear, our potency he make good, take thy reward. Five days we do allow thee for provision to shield thee from disasters of the world, and on the sixth to turn thy hated back upon a kingdom. If on the tenth day following thy banished trunk be found in her dominions, the moment is thy death. Away! By Jupiter, this shall not be revoked! Fare thee well, king. Sith as thou wilt appear, freedom lives hence, and banishment is here. The gods with their dear shelter take thee, maid, that justly thinkst and hast most rightly said. And your large speeches may your deeds approve, that good effects may spring from words of love. Thus, Kent, O princess, bids you all adieu. To shape his old course in a country new. This France and Burgundy, 
Mas não aprendeu outro. Mas não Burgundy. We first address towards you who this king hath rivaled for a daughter. What in the least will you require in present dower with her or seize your quest of love? I crave no more than hath your highness offered, nor will you tender less. Right, noble Burgundy. When she was dear to us, we did hold her so, but now her price is fallen. Sir, there she stands. If all within that little seeming substance, or all of it, without displeasure, peace, and nothing more, may fitly like your grace, she's there, and she's yours. I know no answer. Will you, with those infirmities she owes, unfriended, you adopt her to her hate, dowered with her curse, and strangered with her oath, take her, or leave her? Pardon me, royal sir, election makes not up in such conditions. Uh, then leave her, sir. But but a power that may be, I tell you all her wealth. For you, great king, I would not from your love make such a stray to match you where I hate. Therefore, beseech you to avert your liking a more worthier way than an wretch whom nature is ashamed almost to acknowledge hers. This is most strange that she whom even but now was your best object, the argument of your grave, the balm of your age, the best, the dearest, that in this strife of time Commit a thing so monstrous to dismantle so many folds of favor. Sure, her offense must be of such a natural degree that monsters it, or your forvout affection born with him, which to believe of her must be a faith that reason without miracle should never plant in me. I, I yet beseech your majesty, before I want the glib and oily art to speak and purpose not since what I will intend, I'll do it before I speak. That you make known it is no vicious blot, murder, foulness, no unchaste action, or dishonored stuff that have deprived me of your grace and favor. But even for want of that for which I am richer, as still soliciting I and such a tongue, that I am glad I have not, though not to have it, hath lost me in your liking. Better thou hast not been born, do not have pleased me better. Is it but this? A target is in nature which often leaves a history and spoke that it intends to do. My lord of Burgundy, what say you to the lady? Love's not love if it's mingled with a god that stands to do for the entire point. Will you have her? She is herself a dowry. Well, king, give but that portion which yourself proposed. And here I take Cordelia by the hand, Duchess of Burgundy. Nothing. I have sworn I am firm. I am sorry, then, you have so lost a father that you must lose a husband. <laughs> Peace be with Burgundy, since that respect and fortune is of God, I shall not be his wife. There is Cordelia, that art most rich being poor, most choice forsaken, and most love despised. Thee and thy virtues here I seize upon, be it lawful, I take up what's cast away. Gods, gods, is stranger from their cold neglect, my love to kindle to inflamed respect. Thy dowest daughter king, thrown to my chance, is queen of art, of art and our fair France. Not all the dupes of waters burgundy can buy this unprized, precious maid of me. Bid them farewell, Cordelia, though unkind. Thou losest here, better where to find. Thou hast her, France, let her be thine, for we have no such daughter, nor shall ever see that face of ours again. Therefore, be gone, without a love, a grace, a benison. Come, noble Burgundy. It's about your sisters. Jewels of a father with washed eyes, Cordelia leaves you. I know you what you are, and like a sister, I'm most loath to call your faults as they are named. Love well, our father, to your professed bosoms I commit him, and yet the last did I within his grace, I would prefer him to a better place. So farewell to you both. Prescribe not us our duty. Let your study be to content your lord, who hath received you at fortune's arms. You have obedience scanted, and well are worth the want that you have wanted. 
Poem shall unfold with blighted cunning hides, who covers the class with shame derides. Oh, my prosper. Sister, it is not little I have to say of what most nearly appertains us both. I think our father will hence tonight. That's most certain, and with you, next month with, with us. You see how full of changes his age is. The observation we have made of it had not been little. He always loved our sister most, and with what poor judgment he had now cast her off appears too grossly. Tis the infirmity of his age, yet he hath ever but slenderly known himself. The best and soundest of his time hath been but rash. Then must we look from his age to receive not alone the imperfections of a long and graft condition, but therewithal the unruly waywardness that infirm and choleric years bring with them. Such unconstant starts are we like to have from him as this of Kant's banishment. There is further compliment of leave-taking between France and him. Pray you, let us sit together. If our father carry with authority, with such disposition as he bears, this last surrender, surrender of his will but offend us. We shall further think of it. We must do something, and in the heat. Thou, nature, art my goddess. It is to thy laws that my services are bound. Wherefore should I stand in the plague of custom and permit the curiosity of nations to deprive me? For that I am some twelve or fourteen moonshines lag of a brother? Why, bastard? Wherefore base, when my dimensions are as well compact, my mind as generous, and my shape as true as honest madam's issue? Why brand they us with base, baseness, bastardy base, base? Who in the lusty stealth of nature take more composition than doth got between a whole creation of tribe of Fops got between sleep and wake. Well then, legitimate Edgar, I must have your land. Our father's love is to the bastard Edmund as to the legitimate. Fine word that, legitimate. Well, my legit knight. Just let the speed and my invention thrive, and Edmund the base shall top the legitimate. I grow, I prosper, and now God stand up for bastards. <clears throat> what paper were you reading? Nothing, my lord. No. What? You did in that terrible dispatch of it into your pocket. Give me that letter, sir. I shall offend either to detain or give it. The contents are in part as I understand them to blame. Let's see. Let's see. Hmm. Let's spit a sail. Sleep till I awake. Should enjoy half this revenue. My son, Edgar, I began to write this. Art and brain to read it in. When came you to this who brought it? That's the cunning of it, my lord. It was not brought to me. I found it thrown in the casement of my closet. Oh, villain, villain. His very opinion in this letter. Abhorred villain. Unnatural, detested, and brutish villain. Where's some brutish? Sir, seek him. I'll apprehend him. Abominable villain. If your honor judge it meet, I will place you where you shall hear us confer of this. I will seek him, sir, presently. 
convey the business as I shall find means and acquaint you with all. These late eclipses in the sun and moon portend no good to us. With the wisdom of nature can reason thus and thus. If nature finds herself scorched with squint of vex, love pools, friendships fall off, brothers divide in cities, mutinies, in countries discord, in palaces treason, and the bonds crack twixt for son and father. Spirit of my under my protection, the son against father. The king falls from bias of nature, there's father against child. We have seen the best of our time, machinations, hollowness, treachery, and all ruinous disorders follow us disquietly into our graves. Find out this villain, Edmund, it shall lose thee nothing but do it carefully. And the noble and true hearted can't banish his offense, honesty. It is strange. This is the excellent foppery of the world. When we are sick in fortune, and often by the sure fits of our own behavior, we make guilty of our disasters, the sun, the moon, the stars, as if we were villains on necessity, fools by some heavenly compulsions, knaves, thieves, and treachers by some spherical predominance, Drunkards, liars, and adulterers by some enforced planetary thrusting on. <sighs> All of this by some imaginary enforced planetary influence. An admirable evasion of Hallmaster Man to lay his goatish disposition on the charge of a star. <laughs> my father compounded with my mother under the dragon's tail. And my nativity was that under Ursa Major. So that it follows that I am rough and lecherous. But I should have been all that I am had the maidenliest star in the firmament twinkled under my bastardizing and that Edgar. <laughs> it comes like the catastrophe or comedy. Thank you is villainous melancholy with a sigh like Tom O'Bedlam. Oh, eclipses to portend these divisions. <laughs> now, now, Brother Edmund, what serious <laughs> contemplation are you in? <laughs> I am thinking, brother, of a prediction I read this other day. What should Portend these eclipses. Mm. You busy yourself with that? <laughs> I assure you, brother, the promises uh, he writes of succeed unhappily, as of unnaturalness between the child and the parent, death, dearth, dissolutions of ancient amities, divisions in states, menaces and maledictions against. King and nobles, needless diffidences, differences, maledictions against king and nobles, banishments of cohorts, nuptial breaches, and oh, I know not what, brother. How long have you been a sectary astronomical? <laughs> come, come, brother. Uh, when saw you, my father, last? Ah, uh, the night on by. Spake you with him? Parted you oh. on good terms, found you a uh, no displeasure in his word by or countenance? Uh, none at all. Bethink yourself, brother, wherein you may have offended him, and at my entreaty forbear his presence until some little time hath qualified that the heat of his displeasure, which at this instant, brother, so rage in him, that with the mischief of your person, I fear it would scarcely ally. Some villain hath done me wrong. That's my fear. I pray you, have a continent forbearance. 
until the speed of his rage goes slower. And, as I say, retire with me to my lodging, from whence I will bring you fitly to hear my lord speak, eh? I pray you, go. Here, there's my key, brother. See, take it. Brother, if you do stir abroad, go armed. Armed, brother? Brother, I advise you to the best. I am no honest man, if there be any good meaning towards you. I have told you all that I have seen and heard, but faintly, nothing like the image and the horror of it. I pray you now, away. Shall I hear from you or not? I do so serve you in this business, brother. A credulous father and a brother noble, whose nature is so far from doing harm that he suspects none, on whose foolish honesty my practices ride easy. Oh, I see the business. Let me, if not by blood, have my lands by wit, eh? All's with me is meat that I can fashion fit. Did my father strike my gentleman for chiding of his fool? Aye, madam. By day and night he wrongs me. Every hour he flashes into one gross crime or other that sets us all at odds. I'll not endure it. His nights go riotous and himself upbraids on every trifle. When he returns from hunting, I will not speak with him. Say other I am sick. If you come slack of former services, you shall do well. The fault of it, I'll answer. He's <laughs> <laughs> Repeat off to me! Oi! The king Oi. of France is a drugged up hog! The king of France is a drugged up hog! The roof is feeding for them to the dogs! The king of France is no match for Lear! The king of France is no match for Lear! We should have given our souls a beer! The King of France is a dandy fop! The King of France is a dandy fop! But about his wife, no one gives a fuck! And about his wife, no one gives a fuck! <laughs> <laughs> Go you and tell my daughter and speak with her. Go you call here the my fool. Ah, <laughs> oh, you, sir, come you hither. Who am I, sir? My lady's father. <laughs> my lady's father. My lord's knave, you horse and dog, you slave, you car. Who are you, none of these, my lord? I beseech your pardon. Do you abandon this with me, you rascal? Mm. I will not be struck, my lord! Uh, no, <laughs> no truck neither, you <laughs> base football player! <laughs> I thank thee, fellow. Thou servest me, and I'll love thee! Come, sir, arise! Away! I'll teach you differences! Away, away! If you will measure your lover's length again, tarry, but away! Go to! Of your wisdom! So... Now, my friend the name, I thank thee. There's earnest of thy service! Let me hire him too. Here's my coxcomb. Hmm. How now, my pretty Dave? Sir, uh, what dost thou? Thou had best take my coxcomb, sir. Uh, Why, my boy? Why, for taking one's part that's out of favor. <laughs> thou canst not smile as the wind sits. Thou catch cold shortly. Thou dare take my coxcomb. <laughs> Why, this fellow has banished two one's daughters and did a third a favor against his will. If thou'st followed me, thou must needs wear my cup's comb. 
How now, Nanko? With that, I have two coxcombs and two daughters. Why, my boy? Why, if I gave them all my living, I'll keep my coxcombs myself. There's mine. Now beg another of thy daughters. Take heed, sirrah, the whip. <laughs> Truth is a dog must to kill. It must be whipped out while the lady brat may stand by the fire and stink. Oh, a pestilent gall to me. Sarah, I'll teach thee a speech. <clears throat> Do. Mark it, Nanko. <clears throat> Have more than thou showest. Speak less than thou knowest. Lend less than thou owest. Ride more than thou goest. Learn more than thou trowest. Set less than thou throwest. Leave thy drink and thy whore. Keep in a door and thou shalt have more than two tens to a score. This is nothing, fool. Then tis like the breath of an unfeed lawyer. You gave me nothing for it. Can't you make no use of nothing, Nanko? Uh, no, boy. Nothing can be made out of nothing. Hmm. Just know the difference, my boy, between a bitter fool and a sweet one. Uh, Prithee, no, lad. tell him so much the rent of his land comes to. He will not believe a fool. A uh, bitter fool. Can't thou tell the difference between a bitter fool and a sweet one, uncle? No. Teach me. The Lord I counsel thee to give away thy land. Come, place him near by me. Do thou for him stand. A sweet and bitter fool will presently appear. The one in Motley here, the other found out. Hmm. There. Dost thou call me fool, boy? All thy other titles thou hast given away that thou wast born with. It's not altogether fool, my lord. Yeah. <laughs> Faith, lords and wise men would not let me have all the foolishness. If I had a monopoly on it, they'd want to take part of it. And ladies too, they will not let me have all the food to myself. They'll be snatching. Oh, Nunko, give me an egg. I'll give thee two crowns. But two crowns shall they be? Well, after I had cut the egg in the middle and eat up the meat, the two crowns of the egg. Nunko, when thou clovest thy crown in the middle and gavest away both parts, Thou hast borst thine ass on thy back all of the dirt. Thou hast little wit on thy bold crown of yours after thou gavest the golden one away. And if I speak like myself in this, let him be whipped who first finds it so. Oh, my God. <clears throat> Fools had ne'er less grace in the year, for wise men have grown foppish. They know not how their wits to wear. Their manners are so apish. When were you want to be so full of songs, Sarah? I have used it, Uncle, ever since thou made thy daughters thine mothers. Rather thou gavest them the rod and puts down thine own breeches. <laughs> they for sudden joy did weep, and I for sorrow sung that such a king would play Bo Peep and go with fools among. Oh, pretty uncle, keep a schoolmaster to teach thy fool to lie. I and you them. lie, Sarah. You lie. We'll have you whipped. I marvel at what came down thy daughters are. They'd have me whipped for speaking truth. They'd have me whipped for lying. And sometimes I am whipped for holding my peace. I... Thou hast shaved thy wit on both sides and left nothing in the middle. I, I, I had rather be any kind of thing than a fool. Yet I would not be thee, Nanko. Thou hast pared thy wit on both sides. There is now nothing in the middle. <gasps> Here comes one of the pairings. <gasps> How now, daughter? What makes that fronted on? Methinks you are too much of lathe in a frown. Thou wast a pretty fellow, and thou hast no need to care about fair frowning. Now thou art an O without a figure. I'm better than thou art now, uncle. I'm a fool. Thou art nothing. 
Yes, madam, I shall hold my tongue. As your face bids me so, though you say nothing, mum, mum. He that keeps nor crust nor crumb, weary of all, shall want some. Now there's a shell piece, God. Not only, sir, this your all license fool, but other of your insolent retinue do hourly cop and quarrel, breaking forth in a rank in not to be endured riots. Sir, I had thought by making this well known unto you to have found a safe address, now grow fearful by what yourself too late have spoke and done, that you protect this course and put it on by your allowance, which if you should, the fault would not scape censure, nor the redresses sleep, which in the tender of a wholesome wheel might in their working do you that offence, which else was shame that the necessity would call discreet proceeding. For well, you know, Nuncle, the hedge sparrow fed the cuckoo so long that it's had it had bit off by its young. So out went the candle, and we were all left darkly. Are you a daughter? <laughs> I would you would make use of your good wisdom, for if I know you are fraught and put away these dispositions which of late transport you from what you rightly are. <laughs> May not the ass know when the cart draws the horse. Whoop, jump. <laughs> Does any here know me? Hmm? This is not clear. Does Lear walk thus? Speak thus? Where are his eyes? <laughs> Either his notion weakens, or his discernings are lethargy. <laughs> Waking, tis not so. Who is it that can tell me who I am? Not me. Lear's shadow. Ah, I would learn that, for by the marks of sovereignty, knowledge, and reason, I should be forced to persuade that I had daughters. Which they would make an obedient father. Your name, fair gentlewoman? This admiration, sir, is much of the savour of other new, new pranks. I do beseech you to understand uh. my purposes aright, as you are old and reverend, should be wise. You, you do you keep a hundred knights and squires, men so disordered, so debauched and wretched? <sighs> but this our court, infected with their manners, shows like a righteous inn. Epicurism and lust makes it more like a tra tavern or a brothel than a graced palace. The shame itself doth speak for instant remedy. Be then desired by her that else will take the thing she begs a little to disquantity your train, and the remainders that shall still depend to be such men as may besort your age, which know themselves and you. Darkness and devils! Sound of my horses! Get my train together! <laughs> Degenerate bastard, and I trouble thee, yet have I left a daughter! You strike my people, and your disordered rabble make servants of their betters! Whoa, they're too late, repent. Uh, oh, sir, are you come? Is it your will? Speak, sir. Prepare my horses. Ingratitude, thou marble hearted fiend. More hideous when thou showest thee in a child than a sea monster. Pray, sir, be patient. Ah, detested guide, thou liest. My train are men of choice and rarest parts that all particulars of duty know and in the most exact regard support the worships of the name. Oh, was most small fault. How ugly didst thou in Cordelia's show, which like an engine, wrenched by frame of nature from the fixed place, drew from my heart all love and added to the gall. Oh, Lear, Lear, Lear. Be that escape and let thy folly in and thy dear judgment out. Go! Go, my people! Go! My lord, I am guiltless as I am ignorant as to what hath moved you. Ah, it may be so, my lord. Hear nature, hear. Dear goddess, hear me. Suspend thy purpose if thou didst intend to make this creature fruitful. Into her womb convey sterility. Dry up in her the organs of increase, and from her derogate body never spring a babe to honor her. If she must steam great her child of spleen, let it may live and be a thought this nature torment to her. Let it stamp wrinkles in the brow of youth with candid tears for channels in her cheeks. Turn all her mother's pains and benefits to laughter and contempt, that she may feel a sharper than a serpent to the distress of a thankless child. Away! Away! 
No gods that we adore, where comes this? Let yourself to know more of it, but let his disposition have that scope as dotage gives it. What? Fifty of my followers at a clap within a fortnight? What's the matter, sir? I'll tell thee, life and death! I am ashamed that thou hast power to shake my manhood thus, that his hot tears which break for me perforce should make thee walk them! Blasts and fogs upon thee, the intended woundings of a father's curse pierce every sense about thee! Oh, I'll pluck you out, old fond eyes, beweep this cause again, and cast you with the waters you lose to temper clay! <laughs> <laughs> is it come to this? <sighs> Let it be so. I have another daughter, who I am sure is kind and comfortable. When she shall hear this of thee, she'll flay thy wolfish visage with her nails. Thou shalt find that I'll resume the shape which thou dost think I have cast off forever. <sighs> Do you mark that? I cannot be so partial, Gunnar, to the great love I bear you. Pray you Pray. content. What, Oswald, ho! You, sir, more knave than fool, after your master! Uncle Lear, Uncle Lear, tarry, take thy fool with thee. Hmm. A fox, when one has caught her, and such a daughter, should sure to the slaughter. My cap! could buy a halter. Now the fool follows after. This man had had good counsel. A hundred knights! Tis politic and safe to let him keep up at point a hundred knights. Yes, that on every dream, each buzz, each fancy, each complaint, each dislike, he may in God his dotage with their powers and hold our lives in mercy. Oswald, I say! Well, you may fear too far. Safer than trust too far. Let me still take away the harms I fear, not fear still to be taken. I know his heart. What he hath uttered, I have writ my sister. She sustained him and his hundred knights when I have shown them fitness. How now, Oswald? What, have you read that letter to my sister? Aye, madam. Take you some company and away to horse. Inform her full of my particular fear. There too had such reasons of your own as may compact it more. Get you gone and hasten your return. No, no, my lord. This milky gentleness and cause of yours, though I condemn not yet under pardon, you are much more a task for want of wisdom than praised for humble mildness. How far your eyes may pierce, I cannot tell. Striving to better, ought we mark what's well. Nay, then. Go you before to Gloucester with his letters. Acquaint my daughter no further with anything, you know, that comes from her demand out of the letter. If your diligence be not speedy, I shall be there for you. I will not sleep, my lord, till I have delivered your letter. If a man's brains were in his heels, what if not in danger of kites? Aye, boy. Then pretty thee, uncle, thy witch shall not go slipshod. <laughs> shall see that thy other daughter use thee more kindly, for if she's as like this as a crab's, like an apple, Yet I can tell what I can tell. What canst tell, boy? She'll taste as like this as a crab does to a crab. Canst thou tell why one snow stands in the middle of one's face? No. Why, to keep one's eyes on either side snows, that what a man can't smell out, he may spy into an uncle. I did her wrong. Uh, canst thou tell how an oyster makes its shell? No. Nor I neither. 
yet I can tell why a snail has a house. Why? I to put one's head in, not give it away to his daughters and leave their horns without a case. I will forget my nature. So kind to father. Be my horses ready! Thy asses are gone about them, uncle. The reason why Seven stars, number no more than seven, is a pretty reason. Is there not eight? Yes, indeed. Thou wouldst make a good fool, uncle. Taking it for false, monster gratitude. If thou, wert, if thou wert my fool, I would have thee beaten for being old before thy time. Was that? Thou shouldst not have been old before thou hadst been wise. Let me not be mad, not mad, sweet heavens. Keep me in temper. I would not be mad. I heard myself proclaimed, and by the happy howl of a tree, escaped the hunt. No port is free. No place that guard with most unusual vigilance does not attend my taking. Whilst I may escape, I will preserve myself. And then be thought to take the basest and poorest shape that ever penury in contempt of man brought near to beast. My face, I'll grind with filth. Blanket my loins, elf all my hairs and knots, and with presented nakedness, out face the winds and persecutions of the sky. This country gives me proof and precedent of bedlam beggars who with roaring voices strike in their numbed and mortified arms. Pins, wooden pricks, Nails, sprigs of rosemary. And with this horrible object from low farms, poor pelting villages, sheep coats and mills, sometime with lunatic bands, sometime with prayers, enforce their charity. Oh, Charlie God, Tom. It's something yet. And you're ain't nothing yet. It is strange that they depart from home and not send back my messenger. Hail to thee, noble master. Huh? Huh? Makest thou this shame thy pastime? No, my lord. <laughs> he wears cruel garters. Horses are tied by the heads, dogs and bears by the necks, monkeys by the loins, and men by the legs. Now when a man's ever lusty at legs, then he wears wooden nether stocks. What's he that hath so much thy place mistook to set thee here? It is both he and she, your son and daughter. No. Yes. No, no, I yes. say. Yes, I say yea. By Jupiter, I swear no. By Juno, I swear I. Did Durst not do it? 
I could not, would not do it. Tis worse than murder to do upon such respect such violent outrage. Resolve me with all modest haste which way thou mightest deserve of the imposed usage coming from us. My lord, when at their home I did commend your highness letters to them, ere I was written from the place that showed my duty kneeling, came there a reeking post, stood in his haste, half breathless, panting forth from Goneril his mistress salutations, delivered letters, spite of intermission, which presently they read, on whose contents they summoned up their miny straight to course, commanded me to follow and attend the leisure of their answer, gave me cold looks, and meeting here the other messenger, whose welcome I perceived had poisoned mine, being the very fellow which of late displayed so saucily against your highness, having more man than wit about me, drew. To raise the house with loud and coward cries, your son and daughter found this trespass worth the shame which here it suffers. Winter's not gone yet if the wild geese fly that way. Oh, fathers that wear rags do make their children blind. Fathers that bear bags shall see their children kind. Fortune that aren't whore never turns its key to the poor. But for all this, one shall see as many dollars for thy daughters as thou canst tell in a year. Oh, how this mother swells up in my heart. This sorry capacio, thy climbing sorrow, the elements below. <laughs> Where is this daughter? With the earl, sir, here within. Follow me not. Stay here. <clears throat> Made you no offense, but what you speak of? None. How chance the king comes with so small a number? And how has been set in the socks for that question? Well, thou wilt deserve it. Why, fool? We'll set thee to school, to an ant, to teach thee there's no labor in the winter. All that follow their noses are led by their eyes, but blind men. And there's not one nose among twenty but can smell him that's stinking. Let go thy hold when a great wheel runs down the hill, lest it break thy neck in following. The great one that goes upward, let him throw thee after. Now, if a wise man gives thee better count, so give him mine again, for I'd none but knaves follow it, for a fool gives it. That sir, which serves and seeks for gain and follows, but for form, will pack when it begins to rain and leave thee in the storm. And I will tarry, the fool will stay. And let the wise man fly. The knave turns fool that runs away. The fool, no knave, but die. Well learned you this fool. Not in the stocks, fool. Did I just speak with me? They are sick, they are weary, they have traveled all the night. Me fetches the images of revolt and tying off. Fetch me a better answer. My dear lord, you know the fiery quality of the duke, how unremovable and fixed is in his own court. Vengeance, play death, confusion! Fiery? What quality? Gloucester, Gloucester, I'd speak with the Duke of Cornwall and his wife. Well, my good lord, I have informed them, sir. Informed them? Does thou understand me, man? Aye, my good lord. The king would speak with Cornwall. The dear father would with his daughter speak, commands and service. Are they informed of this? My breath and blood. Fiery. The fiery duke. Tell the hot duke. That it... No, no. Not yet. Maybe it's not well. Infirmity doth still neglect her office, where her health is bound. We are not ourselves, when nature, being oppressed, commands the mind to suffer with the body. <sighs> Forbear. And I'm fallen out with more, more heavy will to take the indisposed and sickly fit to sound man. Death of my state! 
Wherefore should he sit here? Uh, this act persuades me that this revolution of the Duke and her is practice only. Uh, give me my seven forth. Uh, go tell the Duke and his wife and speak with them. Now, presently, bid them come forth and hear me, or at the chamber door I'll beat the drum till it twice they could tell. I would have uh, a little bit twixt you. Oh, my heart, we're rising hard, but down. <laughs> cry to it, uncle, cry to it, uncle. As the cock needed to the eels when she put them in the paste alive, she napped them over the coxcombs with a stick and cried down, wantons, down, down. <sighs> Twas her brother who in pure kindness to his horse buttered his hay. Good morrow to you both. I Good morrow. <laughs> Regan, I think you are. I know what reason I have to think so. If thou shouldst not be glad, I will divorce me from thy mother's tomb, sepulchring adulterous. Oh, are you free? Some other time for that. Beloved Regan, thy sister's not. Regan, she's tied chop to the kindness like a vulture. Here, yeah. I can scarce speak to thee. Thou wilt not believe with how to pray the quality, O oh, Regan. I pray you, sir, take patience. I have hope you less know how to value her desert than she to scant her duty. Uh, say, how's that? I cannot think my sister in the least would fail her obligation. If, sir, perchance, she have restrained the riots of your followers, tis on such ground to such wholesome end as clears her from all blame. <sighs> Curses on her! No, sir, you are old. Nature and you stands on the very verge of his confine. You should be ruled and led by some discretion that discerns your state better than you yourself. Therefore, I pray you that to our sister you do make return. Uh, say you have wronged her. Ask her forgiveness? <laughs> Do you but mark how this becomes a house? Dear daughter, I confess that I am old. Age is unnecessary. On my knees I beg that you vouchsafe me raiment, bed, and food. Good sir, no more. These are unsightly tricks. Return you to my sister. Never, Regan! She hath abated me of half my train. Look black upon me, struck me with a tongue, more supper like upon a very heart. All the sword vengeances of heaven fall into a grateful top. Strike her young bones, you're taking as with lameness. Fie, sir, fie. You nimble lightnings, dot your blinding flames into her scornful eyes. Infect her beauty, you fence on fogs, drawn by the powerful sun to fall and blister. Oh, the blessed gods! So all you wish on me when the rash mood is on. No, no, Regan, no, no, thou shalt never have my curse. Thy tender hefted nature shall not give thee aught to harshness. Her eyes are fierce, but thine to comfort and upburn. Tis not of thee to grudge my pleasures, to cut off my train, and in conclusion to oppose to bolt against my coming in. Thou better knowest the offices of nature, bond of childhood, effects of courtesy, dues of gratitude. Thy half of the kingdom hast thou not forgot wherein I thee endowed. Good sir, to the purpose! We'll put my man in the stocks! What drop is that? I know it, my sisters. This approves her letter that she would soon be here. Is your lady come? Ah, this is a slave whose easy borrowed pride dwells in a fickle base of her he follows. Out, Violet, by my sight! What means your grace? Who stopped my servant? Regan, I have good hope thou didst not know in it. Who comes here? Oh, heavens! <laughs> if you do love old men, if your sweet sway allow obedience, if you yourselves are old, make it your cause, send down and take my part. I'm not ashamed to look upon this beard. Regan, will you take her by the hand? Why not by the hand, sir? How have I offended? All's not offence that indiscretion finds in dotage, dotage terms, sir. Besides, you are too tough. Will you yet hold? Okay, my man, in the stars! I set him there, sir, but his own disorders deserve much less advancement. You? 
Did you? I pray you, father, being weak, seems so. If till the expiration of your month you will return and sojourn with my sister, dismissing half your train, come then to me. I am now from home, and out of that provision it shall be needful for your entertainment. Return to her? And fifty men dismissed? No! Rather, I abjure all roofs and choose to wait against the enmity of the air to be a comrade and a wolf and owl, necessity shall pinch. Return to her? Why, the hot blooded fancy that doubtless took a youngest born. Well, I could as well be brought to knee his throne and squirrel I pension beg to keep base life afoot. Return with her. Persuade me rather to be slave and sumter to this detested groom. At your choice, sir. I pray thee, daughter, do not make me mad. I will not trouble thee, my child. Farewell. We'll no more meet, no more see one another. But if thou art my flesh, my blood, my daughter, or rather a disease that's in my flesh, which I must needs call mine, <laughs> thou art a boil, a plague sore, a carbuncle in my corrupted blood. But I'll not chive thee. <laughs> Let shame come when it will. I do not call it. I do not bid the thunder bearer shoot, nor tell tales of thee, nor high judging Jove. Mend when thou canst. Be better at thy leisure. I can be patient. I can be with Regan, I and my hundred knights. Not altogether so. I looked not for you yet, nor am provided for your fit welcome. Give ear, so to my sister, for those that mingle reason with your passion must think you old, and so. But she knows what she does. Is this well spoken? I dare avouch it, sir. What? Fifty followers? Is it not well? What should you need of more? Yea, or so many, so that both charge and danger speak against so great a number? How in one house should many people under, under two commands hold amity? Tis hard, almost impossible. Why might not you, my lord, receive attendance from those that you call servants, or from mine? Why not, my lord? If then they chance to slack you, for now I spy a danger, we could control them. If you are come to me, I entreat you to bring but five and twenty, to no more will I give place or notice. I gave you all. And in good time, you gave it! Made you my guardians, but depositaries, but kept a reservation to be followed with such a number. What? Must I come to you with five and twenty? Said you, Regan. And speak it again, my lord, no more with me. Those wicked creatures do like well favoured when others are more wicked, not being the worst chance in some rank of place. Let's go with thee. Thy fiftieth, thou double fifth, five and twenty, thou art twice a love. Hear me, my lord, what need you five and twenty, ten or five, to follow in a house where twice so many have a command to tend you? What need one? A reason of the need. Basest beggars are in the poorest thing superfluous. Allow not nature more than nature needs. Man's life is cheap as beasts. Thou art a lady. If only to go warm with gorgeous, why nature needs not what thou gorgeous wearest, which scarcely keeps thee warm, but for true. Ah, oh, you heavens, heavens! Give me the patience, patience I need! Uh, if uh, you see me here, you got a poor old man, as full of grief as age, wretched in both. If it be you that stirs this daughter's hearts against her father, for me not so much to bear it tamely. Touch me with noble anger, and let that women's weapons, water drops, stain my man's cheeks. Uh, no. You unnatural hands, I will have such revenges on you both that all the world shall, I will do such things what they are yet, I know not, but they shall be the terrors of the earth. You think I'll weep? No, I'll not weep. I have full cause of weeping, but this heart shall break into a hundred thousand flaws, or else I'll weep. Fool! I shall go mad! Better thus, and don't you be contemned and still contemned and flattered. You be worst, the lowest and most dejected thing of fortune. Stand still in esperance, lives not in fear. 
the lamentable changes from the best worst returns to laughter. Welcome then, thou unsubstantial air that I embrace. The wretch that thou hast blown into the worst owes nothing to thy blasts. And yet, who comes here? My father, holy let. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What are thy strange mutations? Make us hate thee. Life would not yield to age. Sir <laughs> fellow. Four times a cold. A bit further. Come on, hither. Fellow, I must. Oh, bless thy sweet eyes. Oh, they bleed. Lost, so is the way to Dover. About style and gait, horseway and footpath. Poor Tom hath been scared out of his good wits. Bless thee, good man, son. From the foul fiend. Five fiends have been in poor Tom at once. Of lust, of abidigans, abidigans, prince of dumbness, mahu of stealing, murder of murder, liberty gibbet of mopping and mowing, who since possesses chambermaids and waiting women. So bless thee, master. Yeah. Take this purse. The home, the heaven's plagues, how humble to all strokes that I am wretched makes thee the happier. Heavens, deal so still that the super fluous. In lust diet in man that slaves your ordinance that will not see because it does not feel. Feel your power quickly. So distribution should undo excess. And each man Dost thou know Dover? Aye, Master. There is a cliff whose high and bending head looks fearfully in the confined deep. Bring me to the very brim of it, and I'll repair their misery. The dog's bear is something rich about me. From that place, I shall know what he's need. Give me thy arm. Poor Tom shall lead thee. Then shall he go no further. It is the cowish terror of his spirit that dares not undertake. He'll not feel wrongs which tie him to an answer. Our wishes on the way may prove effects. Back, Edmund, to my brother. Hasten his musters and conduct his powers. I must change names at home and give the distaff into my husband's hands. This trusty servant shall pass between us. Ere long you are like to hear. If you dare venture in your own behalf, a mistress command, wear this, it's my speech, decline your head. This kiss, if durst speak, 
would stretch thy spirits up into the air. Conceive and fare thee well. Yours in the ranks of death. My most dear Gloucester. Oh, the difference of man in man! Alack, tis he. Why, he was mad even now as mad as the vexed sea, singing aloud, crowned with rank fumiter and furrow wheat with hard docks, hemlocks, nettles, cuckoo flowers, donnel, and all the idle weeds that grow in our sustaining corn. A century sent forth. Search every acre in the high grown field and bring him to our eye. What can man's wisdom in the restoring of his bereaved sense? He who helps him have all my outward worth. There is means, madam. A foster nurse of nature is repose, the which he lacks, that to provoke in him are many simples operative, whose power will close the eye of the anguish. Oh, bless secrets, all oh, you unpublished virtues of the earth, spring with my tears, be agent and remediate in the good man's distress. Seek, seek for him, lest this ungoverned rage dissolve the life that wants the means to lead it. How does the king? Madam, sleep still. Oh, you kind gods, cure this great breach in his abusive nature. The injured and jarring senses, oh, wind up of this child changed father. So please, your majesty, that we may wake the king. He has slept long. Be governed by your knowledge and proceed in this way of your own will. Is he all right? Aye, madam. In the heaviness of sleep, we push fresh garments on him. Oh, goodbye, good madam. When we do awake him, I doubt not of his temperance. Very well. Please you, draw near. Louder the music there. Oh, my dear father. Restoration hangs thy medicine on my lips. And let this kiss repair those violent harms that my two sisters have in thy reverence made. Kind and dear princess. Had you not been their father, did these white flakes to challenge pity of them? Was this a face to be opposed against the jarring winds? To stand against a deep dread bolted thunder in the terrible and nimble stroke of quick cross lightning. To watch purple do with his thin helm. Mine enemy's dog, though he had bit me, should have stood that night against my fire. And was no vain poor father to hover thee with swine and rogues forlorn and short and musty straw. Alack, this one that's thy life and wits are not concluded all. <coughs> Madam, do you, tis fittest. How does my royal lord? How fares your majesty? You do me wrong to take me out of the grave. Thou art a soul in bliss. 
but I am bound upon a wheel of fire, that mine own tears do scald like molten lead. Sir, do you know me? You are a spirit, I know. Where did you die? Still stuck in your mind. So I was awake. Let him alone a while. Where have I been? Where am I? Fair daylight. I'm mightily abused. I should even die with pity to see another thus. I know not what to say. I where these are not my hands. Let's see. Uh, I feel a pinprick. Would I were assured of my condition? Mister, and hold your hand in benediction over me. No, no you, you must not. Pray, do not mock. I am a very foolish, fond old man. Four score and upward. Not an hour, more, no less. And to deal plainly, I fear I am not in my perfect mind. <gasps> Methinks I should know you and know this man, yet I am doubtful. Uh, for I am mainly ignorant. What place is this? <sighs> and all the skill I have remembers not this garment, nor I know not where I did lodge last night. Do not laugh at me, for as I am a man, I think this lady to be my child, Cordelia. <laughs> so I am. I am. Your tears wet. No, no, oh, but pray you, weep not. <clears throat> if you have poison for me, I will drink it. I know you do not love me, for your sisters have, as I do remember, done me wrong. <laughs> You have some cause, they have not. No cause, no cause. Am I in France? In your, in your own kingdom, sir. Uh, do not abuse me. Be comported, good madam. The great rage, you uh, see, is killed in him, and yet it is danger. Uh, to make him over the time he has lost, desire him to go in, trouble him no more. So further settling. Will it please your highness walk? Uh, 
you must bear with me. Pray now. Forget and forgive. I am old and foolish. Know the Duke. Know the Duke if his last purpose hold, or whether since he is advised by aught to change the course, he's full of alteration. Bring his constant pleasure. Our sister's man is certainly miscarried. <laughs> Tis to be doubted, ma'am. Now, sweet lord. You know the goodness I intend upon you. Tell me but truly, but then oh. speak the truth. Do you love my sister? In honored love. But have you never found my brother's way to the forefended place? This thought abuses you. I am doubtful that you have been conjunct and bosomed with her as far as we call hers. No. <sighs> By mine honor, madam. I never shall endure her. Dear my lord, be not familiar with her. Fear me not, nor the duke, her husband. I'd rather lose the battle than that sister should lose in him and me. Combined together against the enemy for these domestic and particular broils are not the question here. I shall attend you presently at your tent. Sister, you'll go with us. No. Tis most convenient. Pray go with us. Oh, I know the riddle. I will go. Howl, howl, howl. Oh, you are men of stones, and are your tongues in your eyes? I'd use them so that heaven's vault should crack. <laughs> She's gone forever. I know when one is dead, and I know when one lives. She's dead as earth. <laughs> Lend me a looking glass. If that her breath will mist or stain the stone, why, then she lives. A plague, plague to you all, murderers, torturers all. I could have saved her. Now oh, she's gone forever. <laughs> Cordelia, Cordelia, uh, stay little. Uh, what sayest? Uh, 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 her voice ever so soft, gentle and low. An excellent thing in woman. Uh, 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 Who are you? Mine eyes are not of the best. I'll tell you straight. This is a dull sight. 
my poor fool is hanged. No life, no life. Oh no. Why should a dog, a horse, a rat have life and thou no breath at all? Thou will come no more. Never, 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 never. I pray you would do this button, sir. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Do you see this? See this? Look on her, her lips. Look there. Look there. <laughs> <laughs> my lord, my lord, break hard, I privy break. Look up, my lord. Vex not his ghost, I'll let him pass. He hates him that would, upon the, upon the rack of this tough world, stretch him out longer. He is gone indeed. The wonder is he hath endured so long, you but usurp his life. The weight of this sad time we must obey. Speak what we feel, not what we ought to say. The oldest hath borne the most. We that are young shall never see as much, nor live as long.
Thank you, everybody. Well done, Cass. Bravo, bravo. Thank you. Look at those comments. Bravi. Nice to see so many friends out there. Come on, Cass. Well done. Bravo. Hi, Agatha. Well done. Bravi. Look at the comments and enjoy them. Thank you. Look, we have so many good, good friends. Friends from the past. How nice to see you all. Hello, Hello everyone. Wow. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you for joining. Fantastic. Thank you for Thank you so much I'm for not watching. Really dead. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, and to cap off before we leave, can we have a quick round of everyone saying what their favorite lines from King Lear are? Literally anything the fool says. Like, I don't, I don't know. Like, there's just something about how it acts as a foil to the overall uh, feel of the play. That's why, I, like, any to um. Like the way John portrayed it, it, it just like immediately uh, got people hooked. I feel nothing by Cordelia. <laughs> that says a lot, you know. There's so much to unpack with that single word. So I, I think it, it holds so much power, and it was probably the turning point for everything that happened, you know that nothing says a lot. Yeah. For me, it's the very first time that Dear says, uh, let me not be mad or let me not go mad. I think that it's such a, it's such a short line, but it encapsulates so much humanity and makes you almost want to root for Lear. Almost. Um, but yeah, I, I always break apart when I hear that line. Um, mine is Edgar's speak, the last line, uh, one of the last lines, speak what you feel, not, what we ought to say. Um, I think it's a really powerful uh, thing for the end of almost the end of the play. I was looking down because I was looking at my phone to find it because it was not my line, but my favorite line is when Lear to a dead dying or a dead Cordelius says, Why should a dog, a horse, a rat have life and thou have no breath at all? Uh, my favorite line is a bit of a longer one, so I won't say the full thing, but it's that whole uh, that whole paragraph basically of Edmund when Gloucester leaves. This is the excellent foppery of the world that often when we when we are sick in fortune, eh, often the sure fits of our own behavior. We make guilty of our disasters, blah 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 blah. Because for me, especially in the when the pandemic started, I was that guy where when the pandemic started, I was at a low point in my life. Nothing was going right, and it's oh, it's their fault. Oh, it's X's person's fault. Oh, it's this thing's fault. When at the end of the day, whatever happens in my own life, I am responsible for it. And like Edmund, you know, if I choose to get my shit together and, you know, betray my father and kill my brother to get wealth, that is up to me to do that. It's not somebody else's fault for that. It's not somebody else who's going to make me do that. It's yourself. So it's like, that, that, that realization of like, oh, everyone else is blaming everyone except themselves. And yet Edmund is here fully accepting himself and trying his best to change his situation. That really resonates with me. Uh, mine would be, you are much more a task for want of wisdom than praised for harmful mildness. It just explains a lot how, you know, you can't be kind in this play or else you'll be like cast off or hanged or something. But it's so ironic because um, even though that was like a line for uh, making sure that, you know, people survive, you have to be like cunning and witty. Albany is one of the people who are alive. So maybe kindness, uh, mildness and kindness does pay. Yeah, good job, Shakespeare. <laughs> it's a good play. <laughs> this guy's pretty good. <laughs> who is this guy? Who wrote this? Mine is, mine is so long. It's a, it's, I don't know, it's a whole monologue, I think, where Lear says, hear nature, hear dear goddess here, suspend thy purpose if thou didst intend to make this creature fruitful into her womb, convey sterility. It's, a, it's, a, it's a long tirade on just cursing his own daughter. <laughs> Why are you doing this, man? <laughs> Why are you going on this long tirade? <laughs> 
I enjoy that that monologue so much. Yeah. <laughs> and looking at Gonorrhea. <laughs> My favorite I, I, line is, you know, stand still in Esperance, lives not in fear, because that it's about hope and courage. Yeah. Mine is pretty self-explanatory. Um, time shall unfold with lighted cunning heights. I think that's the first one I've memorized. I like Regan's sassy lines. Um, in a good time, you gave it. That. That's a good one. It's one of my favorites, too. <laughs> He snapped. <laughs> Mine can't really remember specifically, but it's like the I think I know this daughter. I I think I know this girl. This is my daughter Cordelia, because it's such a it's a huge turning point for Lear. It's like his redemption line. Like, oh, you have a good side. I think mine was when I was when I got blinded and uh, you know I was. I encountered Edgar and he wasn't realizing it was his own son. And then he was praying to the gods that well, there should be retribution for all and there should be um, a uh, distribution, should undo excess. You know, it's, it's like almost he's saying that there should be distribution of wealth because it's what's causing all this um, uh, trouble in their land. So I guess that's kind of, um, it's nice. It's kind of a, communist <laughs> of uh, Shakespeare to say that. So that's it. I like um, one, nothing, my lord. And the other is, Albany, can you say your line, the one we oft we mar when we intended to do well? Uh, uh, it's not the wrong. event? <laughs> <laughs> How uh, far? I think it's like, striving to better, oft we mar. <laughs> So striving to be better, off we mar what's well. I'm a big fan of safer than trust too far. <laughs> Let me take away the harms I fear, not fear still to be taken. Yeah, there's a lot of good lines in this show, but just from the Goneril selection, that's my favorite line of hers. I think we all went. Good. Thank you, audience, for being here. You really completed our learning and our risk-taking. So thank you for coming. We're going to bow out because the actors need to eat and get clean before the next show. Uh -huh. um, and you're welcome to attend the 7 o'clock. Thank you, everybody. Good show. Thank you. Thank you, Charlene. Thank you, Joe, Alex, Nick, all our friends, Chloe. Thank you for being here. Uh Thank you for watching. Thank you, Thank you very much, everyone. It means a lot to us. Thank you.